that means the journals and conferences are not accessible to you uh, that means uh, through your university you no know, through some other websites okay some uh, areas are free for example computer vision is free for all the people to access uh, if they are not accessible then you are walking in the dark and so it's a very bad area to be in so you should you should not select that area as a, a thematic area for your research then the technology is accessible now what that means what this means is this now for example if your research needs uh, for you to work in the particle uh, collider <laughs> in the europe and that this is not there in sri lanka uh, you, you are not so intelligent in selecting that area right it cannot be done uh, so technology is not accessible so therefore you will not be able to make a, a good contribution that is publishable in the top forums also you must have the undergraduate knowledge uh, so you see during undergraduate time whether we uh, consider that as valuable or not we spend four years in the field uh, three or four years in the field so therefore that gives you a lot of knowledge that you do not even even evaluate now let's uh, think about this example now let's see that you went into some other country and suddenly when you are walking or when you are driving along the road suddenly a large red light, red light comes up now what is the instinct that you have you will suddenly stop why do you stop because during the time that you lived in sri lanka you had the knowledge that red means warning red means danger so because of that knowledge automatically you did the right act took the right uh, path, did the right action so like that based on the undergraduate knowledge whether you think it is relevant or not uh, it's, it's extremely important extremely important have the undergraduate degree uh, in the area of research i'm not saying that there cannot be any exceptions but this is uh, very important and then this is the i think the hardest thing to uh, hardest thing to judge uh, for me this is definitely not possible to judge will this area or the team be alive for next 5 years because once you join the graduate program maybe it will take 3 years 4 years 5 years or 6 years maybe. so within those uh, years uh, this field of interest must be alive this team must be alive otherwise you worked so hard on this and the other researchers uh, completed that or gave it up that's a very bad thing to happen so i think now you understand uh, sort of how to find a theme so to find the theme you uh, think about your professor's areas of expertise and you judge whether the professor has the areas of expertise i hope the professors who are listening are not angry with me uh, by looking at uh, his uh, recent publications in journals and conferences in top forums in this area and then it must currently receive the attention of the community the literature must be accessible technology must be accessible and you must have the undergraduate knowledge in the area and then finally um, you have to judge whether it is going to be alive in the next 5 years so this is a hard task as to the final one okay uh, that's fine and now let's uh, see how to estimate the credibility of uh, publications so in the other forums uh, people would have talked about it but i will rush through this uh, so that you know how to judge the quality of a a uh, conference paper or a journal paper so for journal papers now journal papers when you think about a journal paper annually it will have 12 issues so they usually uh, came in printed form maybe not any more uh, so 12 issues per year there is no deadline for submission so this is the kind of thing that you mean by journal uh, journals transactions proceedings uh, they, uh, no no transactions journals um yeah those are the names that we will use for this uh, so in this you can think about the so called high impact factor and the quartile quartile means it is within the top 25% of journals in that area uh, q1 for example some journals can be q1 in uh, computer vision and some journals can be q1 in uh, maybe uh, artificial intelligence but not in computer vision like that so in in the different areas they are q1 no q2 q3 q4 Uh, so, uh, the, the, so if it is a Q1 journal, it's a great journal. So you know, from the H index, you can judge things. H index and the Google metrics uh, can help. And these things are uh, tools that you can use to judge whether a publication is good or not. Uh, so to estimate the reputation of a researcher or to estimate the reputation of a research group, uh, you can use uh, the uh, good uh, the uh, these credentials of the publications uh, that these people have. Uh, so there are some don'ts also do not uh, read new journals not sponsored by a society at least as a start do not read journals that uh, charge money for publishing at least as, as a start do not read journals that are only in electronic or print at least as a start so these uh, kind of things you have to keep in mind so these are measures citations 
And uh, now if you take a paper, how many people have used it? That means citations, a journal impact factor. So the journals will list this impact factor, but uh, be, be very careful about this. It's impact factor. They may use a slightly bogus term and like other researchers uh, talked to you in the previous sessions, uh, they may try to deceive you. So H index, journal citation reports. Uh, so mm, SJR, uh, and quartai, so this I gave more information here, but I will not go through this because other researchers may have covered these things. Okay, so now let's go through some <laughs> little bit of an experience. We are, once you have identified the theme and you like the professor, now you want to identify a topic. Now this is also very hard. So there are two things that can happen. Your professor is a, a great person in this area and he, he is uh, an expert of what is going on right now in the field and he can give you the topic problem solved and professor says Ranga work on this I guarantee the publication work on this I guarantee you solve it it's a publication now that's consoling and that's that's uh, uh, the best uh, professor you can have maybe not the best professor you can have maybe because one day you will become a researcher then you must have the training of being able to find topics like that so uh, so initially it is okay to get the topics from the professor but maybe later on you have to learn by yourself how to uh, find topics on your own. So that's, uh, let's uh, uh, disregard this for the time being because sometimes the professor does not always give you topics. So you are on your own uh, to find out the great topic. Now, the thing is this. Now, let's think about this like when you were a small kid, you know, small kid, maybe, uh, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe you know, didn't even go to school, toddler, toddler. You do something, maybe you eat a biscuit and you look at your mom, right? Look at your mom and your mom will not approval when you receive mom's approval you are happy now when you go to the school when you go to the school teacher will say okay uh, children bring the books and you take the book uh, to the teacher and teacher put a tick correct and you are so so happy right so happy now then uh, slow, slowly you reached uh, all of us and so on then you all of us also teacher mark your books but not too much but you had the examination results, right? Okay, you got an A pass for uh, Singhala. You got an A pass for Tammy. You are so happy. Uh, these exams gave you these grades and you are so happy. The approvals from the society. And then when you reach, reach the A levels and you know, no one marks your uh, books, but you mark the books on your own based on what the person, the teacher works out on the board, right? So you can see slowly you are becoming more and more independent. Then finally, when you come to the university, it's only the exams. Uh, so even in exams, sometimes the results are not released in time also, right? <laughs> so, yeah, so you become in your, but when you become a graduate student, I mean, it's absolutely in the dark. So you are on your own. You must become your own evaluator. You must become your own evaluator. So actually, finally, when you can be your own evaluator of your work, uh, then you have reached the maturity in your research. Uh, that means you judge, okay, my work is good enough. This conference will most probably accept this. Okay, they may reject it, but with ex excellent comments. So when you reach that point, uh, you have become a researcher. Uh, so, so for this, uh, you need this training of being able to find a topic and so on. So therefore, this is not so bad, uh, student finding topics. Okay, so let's go through this uh, process of student finding topics uh, by uh, through a little bit of a, a conversation. Okay, so let's start. Uh, so, um, yes, uh, so, um, yeah, before the conversation, so I had one more slide. Uh, so uh, how to how to where to locate the locate the uh, topic? Okay, uh, for that. So now there are things areas that that you love, right? Areas that you love. For example, if someone asks me uh, to work on power electronics, I would really hate it. I would really hate it. I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like the uh, burning smell of uh, devices. Uh, I hate this. So I will not select this. So I, I don't like it. But if you tell me uh, signal processing, I think I like it. I liked it during my undergraduate time also. Uh, I liked it even now. I Although it's not my main field of interest, I like it. So like that, so there may be, re without no reason, without no reason, you may like some areas or you may not like some areas. So there, there are these things that uh, that's there in your mind. And then you know, these uh, there are areas that you know from your undergrads, you learned them. Uh, for example, there are areas that I like very much, but I do not know about them. Uh, for example, I like uh, how to, estimate the quality of art uh, but i do not know how to do that uh, how to do that okay and then uh, professor's expertise are there so your supervisor has uh, some expertise where should you locate your topic a question for you where should you locate your topic so think about it take a couple of seconds to think about it
is I think uh, the answer is obvious. So you must locate your topic right here at the very middle uh, where you find the intersection between the area, the areas that you love and areas that you know and your professor's expertise. So your professor is also comfortable uh, in the area that you have chosen. Uh, so that this is uh, some kind of, I think, a formula uh, to find uh, a good topic uh, for you, at least uh, zero in on the area starting from the theme. Also, now this one must be based on prior work, must be based on prior work. So if it has no work done in the past in that uh, area, I think you are walking in a very uh, stupid, uh, dangerous path that may not lead to publications. Okay, so prior work means literature papers in the previous conferences and journals. Then also, it must lead to open areas. It must lead to open areas. That means once you graduate, you must have a job, right? You must have a job. You must have a job as a researcher, or you must be able to go to forums and talk about this. And it must lead to open areas. It must open up new areas of research. Now, how do you judge all these things? You judge all these things also by uh, looking at the uh, previous work itself, itself by literature. So literature can help you to do a lot of things. First of all, you can ask whether it's manageable. Uh, so, okay, uh, these people were able to do that using the resources that they had, uh, using uh, this kind of a machine they had, using this kind of a computer they had. So you see that in a paper. I must also be able to do that. Okay, and then uh, you can judge with this is of current interest. We talked about this before uh, because 10 papers addressed this topic last year. So therefore, this must be of current interest and uh, technology accessible. Uh, so, okay, they have, uh, yeah, I think I spoke about this. Uh, this these are related. So, manageability includes a time factor also. So, will I be able to do this in the allocated three years or five year time that I have? And then uh, you must be able to judge whether research gap exists. Now, what is this research gap? Now, we talked about this open problems, right? Open problems in the, in the little cartoon that we saw. Uh, so, this is exactly what we mean, research gap, research gap. So, actually, finding the topic in my opinion, is almost synonymous uh, to, uh, to finding a good research gap. Finding the good, this is very hard. Uh, your professor can assist you. Uh, now, uh, uh, now, what is a research gap? For example, let's think about it. Uh, let's think about a carpenter. Okay, so the carpenter says, okay, there are chairs on which uh, uh, people can sit during leisure time. There are chairs on which people can uh, sit during um, uh, lunch time or meal time, but there are no chairs on which people can take a nap. Yeah, take a nap. Assume that it's the case. Now you can't come, come, you come up with the uh, sleeping armchair or a lazy boy, right? So that you see uh, a research gap is found, then you solve it. So something like that. So existing chairs do not solve this problem. Uh, now that, that is a problem therefore. So here is how I solve it, is the uh, research work that you contribute uh, afterwards. Okay. So I think uh, that uh, part is uh, more or less clear to you what, what the gap is. Uh, so to, uh, while identifying the topic, uh, you must zero in on the uh, research gap. Now you can see there's a little bit of um, confusion here. So how do you find the gap without looking at the papers? So how do you find a topic without knowing the gap? So it's a bit of a chicken and egg situation. So you usually dwell on uh, these literature of prior, prior work um, for some time and discuss with your supervisor and your peers and so on and do a little bit of reading, not a little bit of reading, lot of reading uh, to zero in on a, a great topic. Okay, so now let's go through that conversation I promised, the conversation between a professor and a student. Uh, this one is a good professor. Uh, so maybe, uh, um, yeah, from some other country maybe. <laughs> so the student asks, I want to, uh, design a self-driving car. Students come up with these great expectations. I want to design a self-driving car. So I have done my undergrad degree. So I, I, I have knowledge I want to design. Then, then let's see what the professor says. The uh, professor thinks, oh, an enthusiastic student. And he says, uh, doesn't know how broad the area is. Student doesn't know this, right? Let me help him to narrow it down. So professor, professor says this, uh, professor thinks this. And then great, so he says. Specifically, uh, what specifically do you want to do? Uh, the mechanical design or the visual learning part? So Professor sees that there are two major parts in self-driving, the me mechanical car driving part actually, which in most controls and the uh, deep learning and computer vision part, so, yeah. Okay, and then uh, the student says, oh, camera and the LIDAR based navigation, of course. Uh, 
they use deep learning i have seen some work by waymo and tesla see now this is what the student has seen he has heard about this waymo and tesla self driving cars and then uh, he wants to do this so now professor you can see uh, slowly enables the student uh, to zero in on the right thematic area right this discussion okay so you want to analyze the object seen by the camera that is classify what they are right then professor also says we can do similar work with uh, point cloud seen by lidars so he is uh, slowly bringing the student making student aware of other research areas uh, that are uh, that are there so these are the uh, research themes you discuss with your professor and try to uh, come to conclusions about the theme that you want to work in on all right sounds good i have seen great videos and papers that can detect and segment objects in lidar point clouds so this student has seen youtube videos of what others have done Uh, in regard to this point as you know this lidar it emits uh, uh, your cars also we have lidars now and uh, new cars have lidar so this device as you know that right it enables you to find objects in front of you so self driving uh, uh, cars use these technologies a lot some of them do not some of them do so student has seen those things okay so then professor elaborates on that more lidar uh, point cloud object detection segmentation registration and panoptic segmentation seem to get attention so can you see now professor is making the student aware of the works that were there in the last couple of years uh, in the conferences and journals our group has done some work on the segmentation and transformation so his group also has done some work on that and then the student can go home and browse his name and see whether he has this uh, great uh, conference and journal papers all right i think i like this area so should i use python and c++ no student is so enthusiastic right he wants to already go and program so now professor has to what does the professor has to do now have to do now yes professor has to caution the student okay now no no not like that you have to uh, do some investigation about the area and then slowly uh, zero in on uh, the exact research gap uh, that you want to find so let's see what professor has said eventually of course we will start coding let's first do a study yeah let's first do a study and then professor says shall we see what others are up to Uh, you can start by browsing through the point net paper so professor mentions the first paper's name now if your professor is able to give you the first 10 papers to read i think you are a very fortunate person uh, that means uh, you don't have to you know worry so much about uh, zeroing in on papers and you will not read uh, stupid papers and corrupt your beautiful mind right so professor is pointing to a great paper so the student says Oh, I heard about that paper. I will browse to, and you see, also professor is not asking him to read the paper. I right? just ask him to browse to the paper to uh, just to give him an idea. All right. Uh, you can also see the recent related uh, titles in conferences such as now. You see, professor is doing a very important thing. Now, um, your prospective professor uh, must be able to name the great journals and conferences in the area. And if you do not know that, that means you are walking in the dark. So these are the conferences and journals, of course, in my area. Others I do not know. So CVPR is the uh, top most conference in all conferences. CVPR, ICCV, CCV, uh, WACV, CLIA. That, that, now you go to the machine learning uh, conferences. CLIA, Neuro, Neurips, ICML, ICRA. These are robotics uh, conferences. ICRA and NIROS, and of course, uh, PAMI, IGCV, and other journals. So these are the top most uh, uh, journal uh, in engineering, I think. Uh, international computer vision is the next one so the professor mentions this so he see see the professor is ca cautioning the student not to get into these unknown uh, uh, journals and conferences and not corrupt his mind but to read these good quality authentic peer reviewed uh, journals uh, to which the peers uh, submit their work top people submit their work okay uh, should i read through all of the all the papers now student is enthusiastic he is a nice guy and he thinks okay i should read through all the papers he does not know that every year uh, 5000 papers come out <laughs> he does not know that so now professor has to say something just browse to as a start we will uh, we will thoroughly read later yeah just browse through the titles and then next time student comes oh this is a great list of papers uh, on panoptic segmentation on point cloud so student has found some interest in this area so professor also i think knows this area and then uh, he has found some he has listed some papers so student is good what are the papers many authors refer to yeah he is asking now the what this new student student listed oh student listed 10 papers 
10 recent papers let's say 10 papers now what the professor is asking is now is there a particular paper that maybe four of them refer to cite is there another paper this like three of them refer to now these must be great papers in that area right i'm sure professor already knows this but he's he's uh, guiding the student uh, the way to locate the uh, great literature right oh i see your point i will bring the list next time so hopefully he'll bring the list i will erase also try to narrow down to a few papers then you can see latest papers that cite these selected few uh, we see what these papers do and start the process of finding gaps so he says okay then we will start the process of uh, finding gaps in the area uh, so yeah so this is uh, okay thank you so that's the end of the conversation okay so now let's uh, take a, uh, you know i'll take a little break so i invite you uh, in the q and a uh, window uh, to type some uh, things that you learn from this so what are the points uh, that we can learn from this then i will write it down on this uh, uh, slide that i have uh, so i think then uh, it becomes a little bit interactive right maybe you can write something uh, type something in the q and a session okay there is a question so now most of the journals are open access so our transition to open access most of the springer journals are transition now so we may eventually have to refer to open access journals in is india open access is not a bad thing but if the journal is predominantly working for money it's a bad thing um, but I, as a policy i will never pay money for my journals if i get them i don't pay money okay yeah yeah answer live done okay Done. So, uh, if you would like to type something, please go ahead. Uh, I would appreciate that something that you learn from that conversation thing. So we learned about um, um, the value of literature, right? Literature. We learned about that. We anyway don't have money. <laughs> Doctor Sudhakar, do you know? Even if you have money, you should not pay uh, these people because they are getting my work, <laughs> uh, copyright of my work. So why should I pay money also? Uh, okay, so uh, literature, and then we understood that literature, oh, literature is the one that must lead to the research gap, right? We understood that. Uh, also, we understood that we must uh, enter into a useful conversation with the professor. and uh, you must contribute and the professor must contribute then only uh, things will flourish uh, in a research group it is great if you can have a research group uh, so you found value of discussions discussions uh, what is yeah so that's something we can uh, consider that otherwise that's okay yeah okay we can move on uh, so if you have any questions sir, please ask also so i'm very much willing to answer yeah so uh, akilina he saying that the research should be manageable in time uh, needed uh, technology should be accessible and should mind the research gap yes 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 uh, uh, thank you very much yeah because if you do not consider these things uh, later on we will find obstacles and we won't be able to get the uh, publications out yeah yes yeah great okay so let's uh, move on uh, thank you for that uh, comment uh, so so this manageability manageability then uh, time duration time duration uh, resources all these things are important factors when you uh, zero in on a topic so finding a great topic is extremely crucial so we can somehow solve it right but finding a topic is very hard so sometimes i know we can uh, sometimes collaborate with foreign professors uh, so that they they are very current with literature so they, perhaps they can give us uh, uh, point us uh, toward the great topics okay these are great topics and so on so we have benefited like that uh, in the past in our department so like that so okay so let's move on uh, thank you all right so then uh, this is just, just to have fun and so this research is impossible and then uh, the latest journal is shown paper with the same title you were going to uh, give your thesis uh, someone already did it 
So I just want to emphasize that uh, doing the literature search as early as possible is very important. So you can see like, uh, so I, uh, yeah, my thinking here, you can see is, is not about this getting this uh, qualification of a master's or PhD. It's, that does not matter actually. What matters is that you are able to do true research in your area. That's the idea. Then uh, this degree will automatically come, automatically come. So, uh, so this is why we are so concerned about publishing in good uh, journals and conferences by finding the right gap. These are hard things, but that is what brings glory to you and brings glory to the university. So you will be well known as a researcher uh, because of this and the university will also get the uh, great name and your group will be known. So it's very hard, but that is the right path. That is the right path. Okay, so then uh, let's uh, talk about now, uh, we talked about the uh, theme selection, the topic selection, and we uh, went through some uh, discussion with the professor and the student also. Now we identified the gap is the most important thing. All right, now you found the gap and you uh, solve the problem. Okay, how to solve it? I do not know that that depends on your uh, way of working. So since this is a general discussion, I, I cannot tell you how to solve. Uh, so um, some, some of my students are there in this, so they know how to solve the problems. Uh, that we have in our area, no, at least they know the methodology, uh, it takes time to solve. Uh, so that it, it depends on the field of interest that you have, yeah? Uh, so now let's uh, think about this, like, okay, now you are almost done with your work, then why should you write? Why should you write? Um, in my opinion, for two things, one is to uh, preserve knowledge, uh, second one is to for reproducibility. Uh, so uh, preserve knowledge is like you can see, over the years, mankind generated knowledge, right? Generated knowledge. That's why you have to go to school and learn. Uh, that's why you have to go through literature uh, to understand the field. Mankind generated knowledge. Uh, that's a good thing. Uh, so now we have our duty uh, when we find out something new. That means we are making, uh, now this is the body of knowledge and uh, you are able to make it advanced a little bit, you know, a little bit like that. And then you want to, you want to make the world aware of that. Okay, I have made that advanced, but you also can use it. As mankind, we must advance. So for that, we have to, we must preserve knowledge. You preserve knowledge by publishing. You preserve knowledge by writing. So that's one thing. And secondly, for reproducibility. So reproducibility means the researchers around the world must be able to replicate your work. Must be able to replicate your work. These are two things. So therefore, if you write in a fashion that your work is re reproducible, I think you wrote, wrote a great paper. Yeah, of course, the gap must be there, right? Gap must be there, and that gap, gap must uh, grow in uh, by um, push push the research boundaries, uh, yeah, toward development. And if the, if if you have solved this uh, problem and you uh, close this gap, then of course uh, your work must be reproducible by the other researchers by looking at your work. So it's a valuable work now; it must be reproducible. Uh, so if you take these top conferences like CVPR and so on, so I received the review instructions. Uh, uh, last night so they say okay we don't mandate it but everyone has to submit code everyone has to submit code so as reviewers we have to we have to look at the code also if possible we are not it's not mandatory but we must look at the code that means the work is reproducible so if there's something not clear in the paper um, the code is there so that it's a very uh, clear picture uh, for, for someone else in the world to uh, reproduce so these, these are the purposes for which we write Okay, all right. So now uh, let's think about this writing. It's a very bad picture. People will shout at me for saying this. Good writing is imitation. Good writing is imitation. What does that mean? So I'm put meerkats also like these meerkats. You can see the imitators. If, when one meerkat looks at another, others also look at that direction. Yeah, what I mean is not actually copying. What I mean is this. Uh, so. Uh, over the years, or like 3,000 years of maybe mankind's uh, knowledge civilization, people understood. Now, this is how you make someone else understand a new concept. Yeah, Pe People zeroed in on the way to make other people understand. Now, so therefore, uh, you, you are stupid if you do not benefit from that body of know-how that others have gathered. This is how you make someone understand. Now, how do you make someone understand? Okay, you look at the paper of the previous authors. Now, they must have followed some structure, right? They must have followed some structure. Why did they follow the structure? They understood uh, from their experience, okay, what the other researchers, this over the last 100 years is correct. That means they followed this structure so, so that I can understand their work. Now, this structure, 
this structure is a very simple structure simple structure so we also should adhere to that why not because someone gave a structure because that creates understanding that creates understanding so that you preserve knowledge and your work is able to be reproduced now that is this structure uh, this structure is a structure uh, of the hourglass of the hourglass so i'll tell you what the hourglass means later on okay now you can think about what these letters mean uh, so yeah, I, I have not put one letter here that this is introduction introduction so now you most of you can i think uh, uh, tell me what these letters mean right okay think about it yeah l means literature literature review yeah what is m m means methodology and r means results d means discussion C means conclusion. Yeah, of course, you must have the abstract, right? This is the structure. This is the structure. Now, this structure helps to create understanding. So, what, what is within parentheses are optional ones. So, sometimes some people join literature search with the introduction and uh, discussion with the results. Uh, sometimes people do that. So, that's okay. But this general structure, uh, we have to follow this. So, we will compare a journal write up and a thesis and you will see the same structure so well, there is a value in this structure you see this structure is general to specific to general so you start with very broad general statements okay this is general general or broad and then you narrow down actually these are specific or narrow and then finally you generalize it again uh, general and broad uh, so this is uh, the way of uh, explaining in a paper, a thesis, or in, in an answer to your question. Now, this, this contrasts with uh, some uh, no structure writing like a love letter writing. So, in a love letter, there's no structure. You just pour in the ideas that you get into the mind. But uh, in, in a proper writing, in a journal article, a newspaper article, uh, an answer that you write in a question paper or your thesis, uh, you follow this general to specific to general uh, uh, flow. So an article begins with broad general statements, progressively narrows down to specifics of your study, and then broadens out again to more general considerations. Yeah. Uh, so you can think about this like uh, the the introduction. Introduction at the very beginning is very general. Uh, so even um, an audience that are that is not very specifically in your area of interest must be able to understand the introduction and see the value of the work that you have done. So progressively narrows down. So what are these narrow areas like? For example, if you take the methodology and your results, now these are very narrow uh, things. So without reading the introduction, your method cannot be understood or your results are meaningless without reading the, uh, the introduction. And then you broaden them. And then you go for the discussions and then uh, the conclusion, uh, which is uh, slightly uh, broad and much broader. You make broad statements. The broader the statement that you can make, more valuable the paper is. Uh, that means you can say, okay, this is my algorithm, what I discovered speeds up all these things by a factor of 0.5. Oh my goodness, what a, what a generalization that you, so therefore you can see uh, the conclusion is much more general uh, than the work that you described at the beginning. So this structure is very important. Uh, so let's say, analyze this structure again, the hourglass structure. Yeah, now if you think about this, like uh, the abstract introduction method, results and conclusion uh, fall in with this hourglass structure. And also within each of these uh, things, like within the abstract, within the introduction, within the methods, uh, you will have the hourglass structure. Now you can see that this is uh, uh, now this is the way that you write, okay? Way that you write. So when you write the introduction also, you start with broad statements and narrow down and finally once again broaden it. So then you can go to the methodology section afterwards. Uh, so, so there is this oral hourglass structure and then each paragraph or each section will have its own hourglass structure. Uh, so, now then these what do these arrows mean now they mean the transitions so after writing the introduction you can you cannot just jump into the method you must give a, give some transitionary statements so that so this this flow of the paper uh, is very important the flow of the journal the flow of the uh, thesis uh, is so very important uh, for people to to create understanding to create understanding 
Okay, so this is uh, that I L M R D C thing. Okay, now let's compare the structure of a thesis and the structure of a journal article, perhaps. Uh, so thesis will have a title and then uh, the abstract, the table of contents, list of figures, list of tables, introduction, literature, survey, materials and methods, research, discussion, conclusion, and uh, acknowledgement maybe in Morton University, I think acknowledgement comes as, uh, so yeah, funny stories have happened. So uh, acknowledgements, people don't care about the acknowledgements. So some one person uh, wrote in the acknowledgement, okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we say ladies and gentlemen, I thank Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Smith, uh, um, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, uh, no, I'm a Sri Lankan person, Mr. and Mrs. Smith uh, in the acknowledgement. Um, I thank uh, um, uh, Mrs. Davis, uh, who is my beloved wife. And then in the uh, last sentence, he wrote, I thank Mrs. Uh, Johnston also, who is my girlfriend. So <laughs> totally copied uh, uh, acknowledgement. So yeah, just, uh, just to have fun. No? Uh, so then uh, references and appendices. Okay, so let's uh, now uh, compare this with the, the, uh, the structure of a paper. You can see exactly the same thing, right? Exactly the same thing. Of course, maybe you uh, did not have the introduction and the literature survey together, but you had maybe two chapters there, two chapters there, uh, but uh, same thing. Maybe you had here resource and discussion, two chapters there, but here resource and discussions together. Yeah, something like this. Uh, so it's the same structure that is uh, going on in every a single uh, document that you would write. Even in proposal, you, you would uh, take up this uh, structure to create understanding. The hourglass structure prevails in all this. Okay, so that's okay. Then a little bit about uh, writing an abstract. Uh, I'm guided by this uh, Professor uh, Philip Koopman's uh, uh, document on abstract writing. He's a uh, professor at uh, uh, Carnegie Mellon University. So he says there must be five aspects in the abstract. Uh, the motivation, problem statement, approach, resource, and conclusion. So once again, you can see at all at once, all at once, the hourglass structure in the, in the abstract also. So each of these uh, five items, we spend one or two sentences. Uh, so for example, why do we care about the problem and uh, results? So what problems are you trying to solve? What is the scope of your work? A generalized approach or for a specific situation. So this problem statement must uh, clearly tell the gap, gap that you are addressing, the gap, research gap. Yeah, and then how did you go about solving that? Your solution, right? Your approach of the solution, solution to the research gap yeah? and the results. What is the answer? So, what are the great numbers that you get, got? Uh, did you surpass the state of the art significantly? And then uh, the conclusion. So, when you uh, think about this, like I have seen some papers, I have been uh, the editor of the engineering research unit for a long time. Do, uh, some uh, many years ago. So I have seen a lot of papers with uh, your own results. You are not comparing your results. So if you just put your results without comparison, uh, so that, that don't, I mean, that's not result. Actually, when you say results, they mean comparison, in comparison. In comparison with what? In comparison with uh, existing work. In comparison with the last year's top conference papers and journal papers are in the area. Uh, that's the obvious uh, comparison that you can make, right? So if you are to compare, you have to compare using the same numbers, right? The, that means you need the metrics, right? Metrics, what do they use? Did they use the accuracy? Did they use the F1 measure, precision, recall? All these things, uh, did, you, did they use the um, efficiency? So whatever the metric that the other people used last year, or oh, generally they use in your area, those metrics you have to know and you have to compare. So uh, sometimes I tell my students, my students also tell me this, uh, before start uh, starting to design your experiments, look at the tables that the last year's people have produced. Last year's people have produced. So this metric, this metric, this metric, um, this paper, this paper, this paper, the numbers that they have got, numbers that they have got. So you want to add one row to this, right? This is your work. You want to add one note to that table. So you know exactly what numbers to uh, give in the paper and you know what to surpass. surpass. Uh, so yeah, so always look at the existing results, existing metrics and keep them in your mind uh, so that you can give this comparison uh, in the results. Uh, so to reach a great conference, so in our area, the conferences are, conferences are the hot things people want to get into conferences. 
uh, they write journals also because for promotions and so on you need journals uh, so uh, only surpassing existing research is not good it must be, have a great philosophy also in the paper great philosophy great generalized philosophy that can be applicable in other fields of interest other minor fields of interest uh, in the general area uh, so the great philosophy plus uh, great uh, surpassing research so even if the research are not surpassing existing ones so you may get the acceptance because your idea is great uh, that is valuable for the community uh, so things like that but uh, you have to establish that your idea is a workable idea uh, through the research comparison okay so yeah so the conclusion is the take home message that you give in the abstract so like that you can uh, uh, study about all the other parts of your paper the journal the abstract the introduction method research discussion and so on so university of toronto writing center maintains a lot of documents of this i think you also have uh, seen the books that the library displayed today uh, so maybe you can um, browse through some of those document library uh, books uh, so that you can see what these other uh, parts of the paper mean or you can see existing papers uh, that have been published by great researchers in your area to understand them then whenever you write uh, revising is very important uh, so uh, even if you are the best writer you make mistakes when you write so therefore um, revise it yourself many times so this is something everyone hates you write something you don't want to read it uh, on your own but uh, please uh, revise it on your own and then uh, usually it's a good thing uh, to get uh, others to read your paper maybe an expert uh, in your area a general reader in the field and an unfilled reader also uh, so so that your paper is understood by all these uh, types of communities and then revise again and submit when you are submitting then a uh, little bit about writing uh, and then uh, use of uh, the i had talked to you about how to uh, uh, give references and so on yeah uh, about that i will make some comments so now this is one, one once again a story uh, so uh, yeah so there is a famous scientist called donald knuth uh, professor donald knuth and princeton princeton stanford professor uh, donald knuth so he is the one who father of uh, analysis of algorithms and uh, yeah he uh, came up with uh, latex uh, the tech course or tech tech language also uh, and then uh, he wrote this multi volume uh, book called uh, art art of computer programming so he is like a father of uh, Um, uh, this area so uh, so it seems if you find a mistake in one of his books uh, he would give a uh, uh, 2 dollar 56 uh, uh, cents check uh, signed by him uh, signed by him uh, uh, so this uh, 2 dollar 56 cents also has a, a meaning and that meaning is uh, it is the uh, yeah is the hexadecimal uh, Two dollar fifty six pennies is the hexadecimal of a dollar. Yeah, that's the thing. So, <laughs> uh, so these are considered to be one of the most valued prices uh, in the area. Uh, uh, check from Donald Knuth. So, just to uh, make you interested about this uh, LaTeX thing also. So, if you are serious about writing to top journals and conferences, you write in LaTeX. So, you can use Overleaf, uh, this uh, online thing called Overleaf. um and professor surangika says uh, dr surangika says we are in the process of developing a latex template for um pcs yes so there dr surangika there's uh, one guy uh, in our department also called pili namis and uh, he also is also great great knowledgeable so uh, so he has uh, okay if you talk about tithilness work so <laughs> he has to make a question paper uh, for about 250 students and now it's multi point assessment so he wants to he's a conventional man so he gives a question paper when the student types his index number all the questions change parameters in this pdf document he did that through latex so and he has uh, automatically generated all the answers in a, into an excel sheet so that for each student it's a different answer so people can say okay you can use moodle but you can use latex also and give a conventional pdf question paper uh, to each student so this is what he did Uh, so yeah beautiful things can be done with these uh, tools and so on. Uh, so uh, yeah so it's a good thing to learn it's not hard if you use overleaf it's uh, very easy uh, so there type 
my name has been typed by Binuri, but no question has been asked. Yes, if it is type of question, I'll answer. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so let, let's uh, see uh, um, this. So then uh, if you use LaTeX, it's very easy to cite papers. That's one of the great reasons why you should use this at least uh, because overly it makes your life so much easy um, if you use LaTeX. But I use my own local system. You know, so uh, yeah, one evidence is this now. I mean, uh, when all the now CPR deadline was uh, the, on the 16th, so when all the people were writing papers on uh, Oleaf, uh, that is the hottest time of Oleaf in the world, Oleaf crashed. People got so scared. So for the first time, I think in history, uh, they extended CPR deadline by one day. Uh, so it's uh, so many people <laughs> using Oleaf. So I fortunately to have a, a local copy of LaTeX. Uh, so there are these other reference managers also like InNode, Refer RefWorks, Mendeley, and so on. I think most of you use Mendeley, I know for sure. And those are good things. And Bibtech um, uh, can also be used. I have a text file. I'm a conventional man. My uh, uh, all the references are in a big big text file. Uh, so citation style. So for engineering, uh, we use the IEEE style, Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers. Um, it's numbered like one. So I'll tell you how to do this also briefly. And this uh, American Psychological Association author date uh, uh, Smith and O. Within parentheses 2016, so within over 2016, like that, uh, this kind of uh, citations. And then MLA style, not so applicable to us, Modern Language Association, author page style, uh, Chicago style, uh, Chica in the Chicago manual of style, it's not very applicable, and Harvard style also. And uh, then you can, uh, you, uh, I, I think I have shown in this OLEAF project, I have done, uh, I think, at least three, uh, three of those I think I have done. In Microsoft Word, also in the references tab, uh, you can do this. Uh, so uh, here is a video I did uh, uh, for people because I don't want to spend time here on uh, doing these citations using Microsoft Word. So maybe this is Men Mendeley, so people keep uh, their references uh, uh, in Mendeley, so you can have these different kinds of themes, uh, like the an example, I don't use this. Uh, so <coughs> you can categorize them more, so then you can quickly access these uh, papers. And there are so many reference managers like Mendeley, uh, so this Wikipedia lists all the pros and cons uh, of those. So I will not go through them. So now IEEE references, uh, uh, this detail guide can be found here, but you don't have to worry about it. If you use uh, LaTeX, you are okay. Uh, so there are these so-called required fields in references. So now even in uh, experienced students who write things, I find that uh, they are missing fields in their references. So when you submit to conferences and journals, like missing fees, like page numbers and not, not there, and your conferences, conference titles are different from each one paper to the other, you have not used uh, the abbreviations in the conference titles and journal titles, people think that we are people who do not know their business. Who do not know their business. So therefore it's a stupid thing to be uh, considered like that. So therefore include this uh, important thing. So there are things called art. What is an article? Article is a, journal, it's in a journal, transaction magazine. So uh, for example, IEEE transactions on pattern analysis and machine intelligence is a journal. The transaction image processing is a journal. International Journal of Computer Vision is a journal. So they will have usually 12 issues per year. So you can judge the greatness of the journal also by the number of issues. So you, uh, 12 or more, 12 issues uh, per year. Uh, so yeah, the, for, the, for the journal, you must have author, title, journal, year, journal name, volume, number, pages, month. So volume is the usually the year number is the like one to twelve issue, is issue, and then uh, yeah you can see these entries must be there, this is must be there. So just copying the citation from Google Scholar is not going to do well. Uh, you must be much more educated than that. You must uh, properly fill that in uh, on on your own. Uh, otherwise, uh, Google Scholar will have missing uh, fields like the pagination and so on. So when you cite that paper. Uh, the pagination will be missing in the references section. So if you take a book with an explicit publisher like Wiley, Springer, um, CM or whatever, author or editor, uh, title, publisher, year, these are mandatory. So these are some optional fees also not so important. And conference, so these are called proceedings, proceedings of conferences. So computer vision and pattern recognition is a conference. International conference of learning representations is a conference. 
international conference of robotics and automation is a conference uh, these are conference proceedings so author title book title year pages address month so some people do not put the address but i usually put the address of the city uh, in which the conference uh, has been held so this must be put so in latex when you give the pagination 456 uh, to 468 uh, 68 is too too long it's more like 400 66 10 page paper so you had to put two hyphens you know it's called the n dash n dash two hyphens and so on so these are for people who know latex uh, so prop to properly do that and then phd thesis so how to cite a phd thesis so both the title school year and then website uh, citing website is also very important so these are usually discouraged to cite websites so uh, this uh, try to stick to these four uh, things Okay, so you now if you look at the IEEE's instructions on references, uh, need to be cited in text. Need, okay, they say need not be cited in text. So just don't do this. Whenever you have a reference, it must be cited in the text. So do not take this uh, IEEE instruction. It's not practiced by others. When they are the paper uh, on the line uh, in square brackets inside the punctuation, grammatically they may be treated as if the uh, footnote number. So for example, now inside the punctuation means so if you have a full stop uh, it must be before the full stop can you see that before the full stop not after the full stop in some styles it is after the full stop but in IEEE it must be before the full stop uh, yeah okay. so yeah no questions yet. So you can briefly read through this. I'm not too uh, keen on this because if I use LaTeX, uh, they will be taken care of. Even in Microsoft Word, they will be taken care of. Okay. So I usually do not use these numbers as uh, nouns. I don't use them as nouns. Uh, so, but some people use them, but don't use them as nouns uh, usually. Okay. And then this is an example of uh, what I have done. So I have given the OLIP link also. Uh, of the example that I did, uh, some citations are referenced in the IEEE style. Uh, so you can see, um, so for example, I write Lamport and Fogera and Longa books like that. So when you cite books, you can see this is famous LaTeX book. So the name of the book uh, is uh, italicized and the edition is given and the publisher and the year. Uh, so you can see this italicization is very important and this comma is very important. So we cannot manually put all these things, right? So that's why we had to use some automated system. So once again, book I may also have made mistakes here. This is this famous uh, Rudolfi Kalman's uh, Kalman's with the paper uh, that took I think Apollo even to the, the moon. Uh, new approach in linear. So you can see the title of the paper is within uh, quotation marks. Uh, the quotation marks. So of course, in regard to quotation marks, we, we must always use double quotes, single quotes within quotations within quotations, right? And then uh, the journal title is italicized, and then there is some kind of an abbreviation also. Here you can see, and then uh, volume number they, they don't have issue number, and then uh, pagination and the year. So this is also a journal. So we can see uh, International Journal of Computer Vision. I have uh, done the abbreviations also. So volume, issue, pagination, and, and then so on. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, this is all. This is a conference paper. This famous. Uh, Human detection conference paper, Viola Jones paper, object detection and selection, whatever, and in proceedings of whatever CDPR paper. So we usually give, okay, this is, uh, I think this is not correct, I think. So I, I had to say, could I have said city and uh, city and the state? For US and Canada, you write the state because I is a US organization. For others, you write the country's name also, like UK and so on. Yeah, the pagination also so this uh, yeah you can see um, this is a book chapter i think then uh, so for, for online ones you have to give the date access to also so these uh, fields are important uh, so please do them using an automatic one so information on mla and so on are also given i will not go through these details so if you are using one of those i think you are not uh, then uh, you can refer to this. Uh, I will make these slides available to you. Yes, so I, I have given examples of those also. And the corresponding LaTeX example also I have given uh, this OLIP example. 
how to do that. Then this is uh, how to use Microsoft Word to do that. Uh, actually, using Word is easy, but uh, I'm not too sure whether the database is maintained and so on. So therefore, there can be trouble. So this video uh, is available somewhere. Uh, not somewhere. I given the link uh, somewhere in the slide. Uh, so uh, it's a very short video I made uh, to show how to use this uh, references tab uh, to. Uh, Add references in Microsoft Word. Uh, okay, now the question is uh, uh, should we cover preprints in uh, the literature review? Preprints, that means these archives ones. Um, okay. Uh, um, So I would think uh, that uh, uh, I'll tell our practice. We cover archives papers up to a reasonable time of the date of the submission. Okay, we do not cover parallel submission. That means uh, we are writing the paper and. Uh, uh, deadline is in uh, March. We suddenly see an archive paper now. We don't bother about them. So reviewers also should not actually bother about those uh, archives uh, submissions because uh, it's not fair to uh, be comparing with archives papers that are coming out every day. It's not fair. That, that's uh, what I think about archives, but others can have different opinion uh, about that. Yes. What are the optional fees in bibliography entry? Sometimes these have to be omitted when page count is a concern. So the, actually the page count should not matter for the references, maybe for the journals it matters. Uh, yeah, optional, don't, so don't put optional fees then. So only put the mandatory fees. So, yes. so since this is mainly an engineering community, I think because we are using IEEE style, uh, it is okay to abbreviate also the journal titles and so on. So I think the references will be more or less short, short not too long. Yes, so thank you for those valuable questions. Yeah. Okay, so let's uh, look at a brief publication process also. If you have any other questions, uh, please feel free to ask, uh, ask. I may give wrong answers, then you can actually type uh, what you think also. Um, you're most welcome to do that. Okay, let's look at the publication process also. Some of you may know it, but just to have fun, uh, let's uh, look at that also. Yes. Uh, uh, some conferences have policy which says that not to consider preprints that came three months prior to the conference deadline. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes, yes. Thank you, Professor Surang Dr. Surangika. So this is uh, what our policy is also. Um, yeah, we don't consider because it's not humanly possible to do that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so then someone can ask, what is the policy on submitting to archives? Submitting to archives. Yeah, so it is the thing. So now in the publications, there are these, uh, um, I, I don't know whether I have the slide on this um, uh, single blind and double blind, right? Single blind and double blind. So single blind means the reviewers know who you are. So double blind means you do not know who the reviewers are, reviewers do not know who you are. Uh, so in the double blind case, the reviewers should not be able to find out who wrote the paper. Uh, so in good conferences, these are the only good conferences that we got acceptance only in double blind submissions. So all good con all, all, all topmost conferences are uh, double blind, I think, in our area at least, in our area. Uh, so if it is a double blind submission, you should not submit your paper to the archives just after submitting to the uh, conference or journal. But if it is single blind, uh, yeah, some people quickly get it, put it in the archives uh, so that uh, you can quickly disseminate uh, your ideas to the others. Okay, so let's briefly look at the publication process uh, just to have fun. As for citing preprints in Google Scholar, please check the version version of the paper. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, since uh, yeah, this is an important point, shall we look at this? So. If you want to look at a paper in uh, Google Scholar, uh, 
I hope you are making sense to people uh, about these things. So let's go to Google Scholar. Uh, it's uh, okay now. Since we talked about panoptic segmentation, let's search for a panoptic segmentation paper. But uh, panoptic segmentation, so I know that this is the uh, topmost paper in the panoptic segmentation thing. No? I click that. Okay, so this is the, uh, the this is uh, the series. Uh, so now I want to all 10 versions. So there are 10 versions and then let's see whether you, if you cite this, whether it'll be okay. You can see the citation is wrong, right? You can see the citation is wrong. So this is, don't, don't succumb to this. So as Dr. Suranga says, go, go for the authentic this, uh, place now. Of course, you have to know where your papers are, right? Whether it's in IEEE or this, uh, this is a computation foundation. So this one, if you cite, it will be generally okay. This one, if you cite, it will be generally okay. So, but there also, you can see, uh, if you go to the big tech version or whatever, the pagination is there, the conference name is there, year is there, that's okay. Yeah, this, this citation is generally okay, except for the address. I like to have the address also, but many people do not have the address anymore of the conference. We take the big tech version. Yeah, I think, uh, I don't know, yeah, yeah, this is the big tech version. This is okay, this is okay, yeah. Uh, Yeah, okay. So you see the uh, the accent on the letter is also there in the big tech version. That's the value of that. Yeah, it's okay. So do take the right version of that. Otherwise, uh, you'll do the wrong citation. So it's very painful, <laughs> painful when you receive uh, papers to uh, read of students uh, when uh, the, you do not properly use this, uh, these citations because these are not things that we do want to pay attention to, right? As when you uh, edit the paper. Okay. Okay, let's have some fun once again. Uh, so uh, this is about uh, uh, the publication process. So we want to get a journal paper. Okay, I cannot become a professor because I don't have enough journal papers. So I will die as a doctor. And uh, But one, one of my life goals is to become a professor before I die. So some people say you don't have too many years. Anyways, so so write, so write you write some manuscript. So you work hard, write some manuscript. Usually a student writes a manuscript and sometimes we write part of the manuscript and uh, submit to the journal uh, and editor sends uh, for review. So there's this person called editor uh, in the journal, very respectable man, very reputable man, reputed man. Uh, so he, he, he has associate editors. Uh, so he knows about these associate editors very much. So it is sends for peer review. So ed editor sends it to peer review. So usual editor assigns that to an associate editor who knows about the field very much. This associate editor knows all the people in the field who know about this journal, who know about this uh, topic, who knows about this topic. So therefore he will usually assign that to uh, people who are, has understanding about this topic. So, so what can happen after that, the editor, editor's decision will come in, be communicated to you. This is the, this is the horrible most uh, response that you can get, right? So your project looks like, a your paper looks like a final year project report. <laughs> Rejected with no, please consider some other suitable forum for this uh, manuscript. That's the worst rejection that you can get. So you do some so much hard work and we submit as a fresh paper or usually you submit it to a, a different journal. And then this is the, uh, this is the regular thing that happens. So usually accepted with revisions or rejected with encouragement to resubmit. So this is called major revisions. So you thoroughly revise, submit as a revised paper. So it goes through the cycle again. I mean, this one is, oh my goodness, what happiness can you get if, you, if your paper goes through this part? Accept, accept. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, this thing. So, yeah, very, very rare, very, very rare. Uh, yes, uh, then uh, Dr. Suranki has typed this thing about archives also. So when, when someone has a paper in archives, this person may improve the work or uh, do changes to the work and submit a newer version to the archives also. So if you are very keen about following their work, maybe uh, it's a good idea to check the newer version of the paper in archives also. Yes, I think that's the point she made there. Okay, so uh, this is the peer review process. So most scientists regarded the new streamlined peer review process as a, quite an improvement. Okay, uh, so uh, then we can look at the typical peer review process in a, a journal. So as I mentioned, the uh, editor assigns the submission to the associate editor, associate editor assigns reviewers, and the reviewers review the paper and associate editor receives the uh, reviews and confidential reviews. 
and then uh, associate editor makes the decision uh, to accept major revision or reject and communicates to the editor it will communicate to the decision okay okay this is the slide that i want a single blind review double blind review and open review uh, so i think uh, this uh, some of them are web open reviews i think uh, iclr is uh, like that um, it's a very difficult one conference you know, so then think about the conflict of interest if you're a professor and you are not you should not review papers of your professor and that kind of thing uh, so then when you when people review a paper uh, these are the typical criteria that they look for uh, so first of all the category so is it is the uh, is it application research or survey uh, so uh, we don't usually write survey papers we are not experienced enough uh, so then uh, usually correctness if the is, is, is the paper theoretically correct relevance is it relevant to the conference or the journal uh, because you cannot write a power electronics uh, conference to a um, image processing journal that kind of thing and is it readable readability originality uh, contribution utility utility means is it useful for the research community and results and comparisons and the references so these are the criteria people usually look at uh, is this work original is there enough contribution in this uh, so things like that so out of this i think uh, these three are the most important i think of course correctness must be there right this is a prerequisite prerequisite it must be correct okay so uh, now uh, you can uh, see for example how to write a good review uh, or kind of uh, uh, information from uh, great conferences to understand how uh, how uh, great reviewers think so maybe you can follow these links and read this um, how thoroughly uh, a review would look at the paper but not not in all conferences right but in in great conferences reviewers thoroughly look at your paper uh, they would even uh, think about uh, the paper in the implementation point of view in implementing their on their own point of view and like that uh, so it's good to sometimes read this uh, but i will not read through them so i have given some examples of uh, those um, the guidelines given to reviewers of these journals and conferences it's good to read them yeah uh, so okay uh, then a little bit of writing tips uh, we'll discuss a little bit of writing tips and then uh, i think we will have to uh, conclude uh, because we can uh, we have to take some time for the questions also so for the writing tips i am guided by this book there are two copies in the university of moroder library uh, online version is also available uh, small in size to the point book uh, professor strang is a professor of english oh my goodness this this book is absolute gem absolute gem if you want to read this uh, you will fall in love with this book uh, as soon as like if you can if you like writing that means if you are a researcher you must like writing you will at once fall in love with this book uh, so uh, to entice you i'll uh, tell you some points it says um, uh, choose a suitable design and hold on to it so which contrast with the love letter which does not have a design right so we know that our design is um, uh, the introduction the literature review uh, uh, method then that kind of thing up to conclusion right that's the structure and we have to hold on to that um so the skeleton is very important right so in school also we understood that we had to write a skeleton and start writing our essays and so on make the paragraph unit of composition what that means is uh, if you take one paragraph that paragraph must speak about one topic and first sentence must be the topical sentence uh, it is a sentence of transition but that means it is the one that connects with the previous paragraph and uh, then we carefully choose the order of sentences to prove that argument so we, i will show you one example uh, at last uh, to show what a good paragraph is and last sentence is the conclusion now this we usually forget we uh, just uh, we think that uh, paragraph is a related set of sentences yeah it is a related set of sentences but it's much more than that it is on one topic and on that topic we argue and we conclude we argue and conclude yes now other things like use active voice so maybe a lot of uh, um people told you use passive voice in science now this is nonsense we have much use active voice people say use passive voice in science because they do not know how to write a sentence in active voice writing in active voice is extremely hard but when you write it it is it is a killer sentence okay uh, so uh, active voice is more vigorous uh, than passive voice uh, so put the sentences in positive form so i have a lot of examples taken from this book about this but we cannot go through all these things uh, today but i will go through this uh, paragraph uh, because it it will help us uh, most of us i'm sorry if you uh, know about these things i'm wasting your time perhaps 
So paragraphs are building blocks of papers, right? Not only papers, right? But whenever you write, even if you write an email or an answer to a question paper, it's a paragraph that you use, right? Uh, so learned people are taught and they have been trained to properly read paragraphs. Uh, so the unit and coherence of ideas among sentences is what constitutes a paragraph. A paragraph is a group of sentences or a single sentence that forms a unit. The paragraph speaks about one key idea. So that's the key thing about it. One key idea. Yeah. Uh, so first of all, the topic or the key sentence, the supporting details and the closing one. Okay. Uh, so here is an example from one of these books. And uh, here is this. Uh, okay. See, let's read this paragraph. Huh? Canada is one of the best countries in the world to live in. Okay. That's the topic. So therefore, as soon as you read it, you know that this stupid paragraph is going to talk about Canada as the best country in the world to live in. Now, let's see whether this person is arguing for that in the body of the paragraph. So this part is called the body, right? This part is the body of the paragraph, supporting it. This is the uh, topic. And this must be the conclusion. All right. First, Canada has an excellent healthcare system. Uh, these are true things, right? I mean, the best healthcare system, um, one of the best healthcare systems in the world. All Canadians have access to medical services at a reasonable price. Second, Canada has a high standard of education. Uh, students are taught by well-trained teachers. So these are all true things. And I encourage by to uh, continue at the university. Finally, Canada's cities are clean and efficiently managed. Canadian cities have many parks and lots of space for people to live. Now, once you read this, do you agree with the first argument that Canada is one of the best countries in the world to live in? Now, when you think about it, of course you have to agree, right? I mean, this is true, right? I mean, if they have a good healthcare system, and if the uh, environment is nice, and if the schools are good, I mean, what else do you want? So as a result, Canada is a desirable place to live. So this person concludes. This is a very simple paragraph, not complicated, very simple, just to show you the structure of this. I know most, most of you did this. This one, you, you, are, you are okay about this. Most of you maybe argued also, but maybe you don't have this, uh, this, uh, these connecting words between, between uh, the, the, the sentences in the paragraph. You must connect each the sentences with each other. That's why once you write a paragraph, you cannot delete one sentence. You have to delete the whole paragraph. Yeah. Uh, so therefore, the paragraph is the unit of composition. So you have to very carefully think about the paragraph and then write it. And after you wrote it, you cannot delete one sentence because it forms one unit. And this is the conclusion. So maybe this is the sentence that you did not usually write, especially in the literature review you must write these concluding sentences for every paragraph. That concluding sentence must be, okay, we talked about this body of literature, they lack this compared to my work. Okay, you're not saying compared to your work because you did not describe your work yet, but that should lead to the research gap. In the, in the, when you read the uh, set of concluding sentences in each paragraph of the literature, maybe, your research gap must be very evident. Okay, so we can uh, go through a lot of uh, Examples. So maybe take good, good papers. Now I have uh, given an example in the slides of a uh, best paper award. Also, uh, this is uh, this is, is uh, CPR best paper award, 2020 best paper award. Uh, and you can see that uh, in the I, I took a paragraph from the literature review. So uh, they, that has this uh, structure, uh, this uh, conclusion, uh, the uh, topical sentence, and these connecting words. Connecting. It's very easy to follow these things. And then uh, your reviewers and your people who read the thesis or the papers will understand your paper because of this, it's very easy to follow your argument. Oh, this is what this person is saying. It's obvious that this person must be doing this work now because the research gap is obvious. Oh, the method is very like that. People will like it and therefore people will not feel angry about your paper. You know, you don't want to make the reviewer angry about your paper. So if you follow the, this uh, paragraph uh, structure and, uh, and so on, uh, it will make the reader read happy. So yes, these are the points that I wanted to make today. Uh, so we can read about uh, writing and so on a uh, lot. And, uh, I don't think it is the time to go through all, them, so all of them. So I have given some examples from uh, uh, the book that I mentioned, Strunk and White. We will not go through all of them. Just to have fun, shall we look at one of them? Maybe. Yeah, using active voice. This, this is the part I like very much. So, okay. So, it's just, just to have fun. Huh? Uh, this one example. So, okay. This is a passive voice sentence, right? So, in, in single, this is called karma karaka, right? Karma karaka. Uh, there were a great number of dead leaves lying on the ground. 
they are were a great number of dead leaves lying on the ground and it's like it's a dead, like a dead field hmm. uh, okay let's see the 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 active voice one is dead leaves covered the ground now this one is powerful right dead leaves covered the ground now can you write your papers in active voice it's very hard but when you write it it's so powerful okay so with that i, I like to uh, conclude the, 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 the discussion so we talked about the topic selection. So we have to think about the appeal of the topic to you. You must like the topic and the theme. Uh, you must have expertise and your professor must have expertise and you judge professor's expertise through literature, uh, through the publications he or she has had. Uh, that, that's the value of the literature in this case and it must be feasible. And then we looked at the structure of a general paragraph, the hourglass structure, remember? And we looked at general to specific to general and we saw the parallels in uh, a general article as well as uh, 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 thesis that you would write. And then we looked at the citations and bibliography styles. We mainly looked at the IEEE style and I pointed you to some overleaf links of which I, uh, in which I have given you examples. But we identified the main fields that each of these citation types should have the, uh, the first of all, the article, the conference paper, uh, the book and the online, uh, these four categories. Uh, so do, do not uh, do not use online ones. Uh, then uh, citations references in Microsoft Word. I did not properly talk about it too much, but the link is there of the video that I made about this. And then uh, writing tips. Uh, I showed you the Stran Professor Strang and White book and paragraph as not he the unit of construction and uh, briefly about the style. So that's all. Uh, I'm open for questions if you have. Otherwise, uh, we are done for today. Of course, you can ask any question at uom.lk. So since I'm a clerk in the department, I don't have time to respond to your phone calls. So you can send a WhatsApp message also, that's okay. Don't expect me to answer phone calls. Please do not call because I, I may not have time. I'm a clerk, so the clerks have a lot of work, right? Okay, uh, so I guess uh, we are okay. Thank you very much, uh, all of you, for participating. I hope at least uh, some uh, usefulness would have been there in this. Dr. Dr. for that insightful session. And uh, again, we would like to extend our gratitude for accept, accepting the invitation despite your busy schedule and uh, delivering this informative and very insightful, interesting session. Uh, thank you, sir, again. At 4.30, the session on uh, developing high-impact journal publications by Professor Paul Chan will commence. So please stay in the same Zoom session that does it.